to my little urban homestead and welcome to my new series um, on preserving something that I don't normally do I've got a script I try to write out a script mm, not very good at that <laughs> so please bear with me start with I hope all of you had a good Christmas and a good new year for a long time human beings have preserved a lot of their foods uh, to carry them over winter or because they tended to taste better at times and uh, made some foods more tender um, but um, they used to salt things, um, pack them in salt, meat uh, in particular. Uh, that's one way of using salt. They use salt with um, things like um, cabbages and make sauerkraut. Uh, you can use other vegetables. Uh, I am not much for salted preservation, so I don't do it. You can preserve things in vinegar, such as chutneys, and I do make some of those. And uh, you can also do pickled onions, which I have done in the past when I used to grow some of my own onions. And I um, pickle the shallots. They also smoke it in particular meat again is smoked but you can get some smoked peppers and smoked trees and that but I personally don't uh, use the smoking method for preservation because I haven't got a smoker for a start and if I had got one I haven't got the space to put it anywhere it's only a little place here sugar can also be used as a preservative and it's used in preserving different fruits and berries and uh, making jams and I do do these from time to time but you can also make up like a, a simple syrup and um, pack them around um, pears or grapefruit or pineapple or apples <laughs> I do do that as well so the main methods I use are freezing dehydrating and canning that's what I'll be talking about in these episodes now I'm going to talk first of all about freezing because most people nowadays have a freezer so uh, the initial cost outlay can be minimal or non-existent also some people uh, already do use their freezer for preserving things even if it's um, buying two pork chops freezing one and having one uh, on a meal you've preserved that chop for a later date uh, some things require no preparation at all prior to freezing so it's just a matter especially fruits and vegetables of um, washing them off dicing them up if you want them diced and putting them straight in the freezer you do not have to do anything else to them before as regards freezing um, if you buy in bulk then you should think about whether you need to push your meat up first I go to the butchers and do a haul once every four months and I freeze it but say for instance I get um, 10 pounds of bacon in strips in a pack if I didn't take them apart and 
push up an amount for a meal for me and Lurch then and just put the whole block in the freezer I'll get a frozen block of bacon to deal with and you won't be able to just pull off two or three pieces because it'll all be frozen solid together so before it's frozen I portion it off that's what will um, will help you as well now um, as regards the butcher's holes I do I have here these two boxes I keep separate from my normal boxes because these are what I use just for when I'm uh, doing the, the meat so if there's any splashes or anything that go on it it will not contaminate anything else these are just meat ones and they are greaseproof paper or parchment paper whichever you want to use and cling film and it's saran wrap for my American friends now you can um, get vacuum bags and vacuum seal them if you've got a vacuum sealer if you haven't got a vacuum sealer you could get the Ziploc bags and get out as much air as possible and then freeze both of those things are more expensive than these and these I have found work out better because you can wrap the meat say bacon again uh, for instance your portion whether it be three slices six slices ten slices you can portion it up wrap it up in the parchment paper or the grease food paper and then wrap that in cling film saran wrap and that will keep lots of air away from the actual food because that's what can cause freezer burn and I'll probably be discussing freezer burn in another episode probably so that's for things like meats now uh, you can you can preserve other things by freezing and you do not need to do any preparation before such as tomatoes and um, sweet peppers, chilli peppers, onions you just clean them, dry them, dice them if you want them diced and put them in the freezer straight away you can either use bags I wouldn't recommend this method because they do have a tendency of rolling out the ends on you when you open it up and you're chasing peas all over the place if you've frozen peas but bags are the best method but you can portion them up again have different sized bags I have a larger bag that's in my larger freezer full of say the um, diced peppers diced sweet peppers and I have a smaller running bag that's down here in my kitchen so it doesn't put all of it in one place you can use plastic but I'll go through these in a second other things vegetables that are good for freezing um, tomatoes clean them up freeze them whole and when you pull them out you can pull out just a handful of them if you want to make um, such as um, a lasagna you want some fresh tomatoes you can pull a few out let them defrost and the skins just peel off them once they're defrosted so that actually saves you a, a step prior to cooking but um, sweet peppers clean them off freeze them freeze them whole or what I do is uh, I dice them up and freeze them in the, the way that they're going to be used in a meal chili peppers you can freeze I freeze them whole 
and then when I want to use one I get one out of the freezer and grate it straight onto the food that it's going on. Uh, onions, uh, I cut them up into the size that they're going to be used because then I'm not limited to oh I've got to use this whole onion by only not a bit of it. So I can just grab a small handful, you know, quarter of a cup size or a cup size, whatever one amount you want to use, you can take out of there. There's nothing to freezing onions. Rhubarb, you can freeze. When I get rhubarb out of the garden, I, I um, clean it down, dice it up and freeze it. And if I can figure it out, I'll leave an eye card on my video for freezing rhubarb. If not, I'll put it in the description. You can also freeze berries like blackberries, um, soft fruits, blackberries, elderberries, uh, red currants, black currants, Logan berries, that type of thing, any type of berries, you can clean up and put straight in the freezer and then you, you just pull out the amount that you need. You can also freeze some dairy products. Milk for instance, I, I use these containers for milk because this is the amount of yoghurt that I make. So I, when I buy a large pack of milk, I will get one of these containers, well several of them actually, fill them up about half an inch, three quarters of an inch from the top because you have to allow a very space because the liquid will expand during the freezing process. Put the lid on, freeze as is. And whenever I make yoghurt, which is about every three, four days, I pull one of these out, let it defrost, and I've got just the right amount what I need there. You can freeze cream, yoghurt, eggs. When I've had a surplus of eggs, I beat three eggs up put it in a bag or a container as long as there's not going to be a lot of air space. Um, put it in the container, freeze it up. The reason I do three eggs is then I know when I pull a bag of eggs out of the freezer there's three eggs in there so if a recipe calls for three eggs I've got it straight, not a problem. You can also freeze cheese I, I have done it in the past, but I don't do it now because um, the cheese blocks that I buy have a good two to three months use by date on them and I store them in the refrigerator and that's where they stay and they get used up before that date. But you can freeze cheese. Um, I don't do it personally now because I find that it goes very crumbly. So if you want a slice to go on a sandwich, it's a bit on the crumbly side. If that doesn't bother you, it doesn't bother you. But for me, it was I uh, used it up on things like uh, anything that needed a cheese topping when I was cooking it. Lots of other things need a pre-treatment um, either by blanching or steaming and I will go through that in another episode. If you are doing ready meals for instance you could put it up in just a one person serving which I do do when I make a meal for me and Lurch and there's too much I'll portion one up, put it in the freezer, and then that's for me to have when he's on a late shift. So my tea's already done. But I will also cook up freezer meals. 
you can put them in uh, foil trays but I found because they're just one use only that they weren't as cost effective so I got some and I bought some more of them of these glass casserole dishes which brilliant size for meal lurch um, you just put your food in there your ready meal whether it be a cottage pie, lasagna um, what do we have root mash and cauliflower cheese and put your lid on and if you've done several they will stack really well I would show you them stacked but this is the only one that's not in use at the moment uh, all the rest are in my freezer but they stack really well and you take them out what I do is I take them out of the freezer put them at the bottom of my fridge for a couple of days for them slowly to defrost take the lid off and then if it's something that I want a crispy top to I put it straight in the oven if I don't want a crispy top to it I put tin foil over the top of it and then put it straight in the oven and cook it as though you were just cooking it from fresh anyway so those are absolutely brilliant that's why I said um, freezing is little to no initial outlay because if you've already got things like this use them <laughs> use them for your freezer and your fridge cook a quark <laughs> if you haven't fair enough you uh, you may want to go out and price them up how many it is but these are reusable so if you think these are expensive compared to the foil ones the foil ones are only one use these I've been using now for eight years and I've got about seven out of these so that's been well worth it <laughs> now I didn't want to ha um, have these episodes too long um, I've I've already recorded it once on my camera the battery for that is now charging <laughs> and I'm recording the whole lot of it again on my phone and I'll see which one is better <laughs> thank you bye It's a perfect situation